The giant leap for mankind could have been the hoax of the century. That's one small step for man. Exploring the cosmos has always been a paramount endeavor for humanity, and NASA, the United States' premier space agency, has consistently pushed the boundaries of scientific discovery. In pursuit of this noble quest, NASA has embarked on an ambitious plan that could forever alter our understanding of the universe. At the heart of this endeavor lies the extraordinary concept of constructing a telescope on the moon, a celestial neighbor that has intrigued scientists and dreamers alike for centuries. In this exploration, we delve into NASA's visionary plan to build a telescope on the lunar surface, uncovering the challenges, innovations, and potential revelations that await in the quest to expand our cosmic horizons. This is a reveal the mystery. If you're curious to learn mysteries of the world, space and beyond, consider subscribing. Last year, the James Webb Space Telescope started sending us amazing and never before seen pictures of outer space. It did this by turning away from the sun to avoid its bright light. And then it used its huge gold mirrors to collect light from distant stars and galaxies. This collected light was carefully sent to very cold sensors, which allowed scientists to look back in time at the ancient light that was emitted 13.5 billion years ago when the universe was just starting. While this achievement was fantastic, scientists believe that if we make an even larger telescope that can detect radio signals from very early in the universe, we can learn even more. The problem is that making such a big radio telescope is hard, even on Earth. For example, one of our largest radio telescopes, called Arecibo, collapsed in 2020 because its supporting cables broke. Arecibo used a natural sinkhole to help hold its round dish. Radio waves from the distant past are blocked by our atmosphere, but what if we could build something like Arecibo in space? That's what NASA scientists are planning. They want to put a radio telescope on the far side of the moon, using one of the many craters on its surface. This telescope would be the biggest space telescope ever made, and they think they can make it much cheaper than the James Webb Telescope by using clever engineering. The main idea is to use a crater on the moon like a bowl, so they don't need heavy support structures. Instead of a solid dish, they'll use wire meshes that naturally sag under the moon's gravity to form a reflective surface. This makes the whole telescope much lighter while still allowing radio waves to bounce off it as long as the gaps in the mesh are smaller than the wavelength of the incoming signal. It's similar to how the holes in your microwave oven screen let visible light pass through but reflect the longer microwaves. To make this idea work, they need to find the perfect crater on the moon. Scientists have been carefully studying data from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter since 2009 to find the right spot. Initially, the chosen location must be on the far side of the moon, which is always turned away from Earth due to tidal locking. This shields it from Earth's radio interference. The crater should be distant from the near side of the moon, ideally five kilometers in circumference, one 75 meters deep, and as smooth as possible, devoid of large boulders or mounds. A level rim is necessary for secure wire anchoring. We aim to point away from the Milky Way galaxy's center, focusing on quieter cosmic regions to observe radio waves from the early universe. However, we can't directly aim a crater, relying instead on the moon's natural motion to scan the sky. The sweep pattern depends on the crater's north-south location. Choosing a crater further north between 10 and 20 degrees helps avoid Milky Way noise. Following these criteria, the options are narrowed from 82,000 craters to just 300 on the far side of the moon. And of those, 50 undergo further consideration. The selected crater, located nearly 10 degrees north, is the final choice. The most significant challenge lies in constructing on the moon. The telescope targets electromagnetic waves from 4.7 megahertz to 47 megahertz, equivalent to wavelengths of 6.4 to 64 meters. This requires a dish that can focus and concentrate these waves. Due to the high shipping costs from Earth, weight is a crucial factor. A proposed solution involves a lightweight carbon fiber support structure, ensuring stability in the moon's extreme temperature swings. These carbon fiber wires will be anchored to the crater sides, forming the structure. However, they naturally form a shape unsuitable for a concave mirror. 
Achieving the necessary focus closer to a half circle is a challenge with just two anchor points. Placing weight strategically along the wire's length can change its shape, achieved by altering its composition or coating it with different materials. Anchoring the tethers to the rim is tricky, especially without astronaut assistance. Fortunately, the Moon's weaker gravity, about 16% of Earth's, simplifies this task. Supporting a 2,000 kg telescope on the Moon feels like handling just 320 kg on Earth due to the Moon's lower gravity. To place the telescope on the Moon, there are several ideas under consideration. One involves using JPL-developed robots to manually position the wires. Another approach is to shape the anchoring wires above the crater before the telescope lands, either by firing anchors before landing or using multiple landers at specific anchor spots. However, the most cost-effective option is to use a single lunar lander that lands in the middle of the crater and shoots anchors above the crater rim which dig into the lunar surface. This method is cost-effective at around $2.4 billion, while using rovers for wire deployment would cost approximately $4.5 billion. Once the wire are in place, they form the telescope's framework and are used to raise the antenna receiver to the focal point. Care must be taken to avoid damaging the wires on the rough lunar surface and a robot pulley system could be used for deploying the structures without increasing friction on the crater rim. The reflector mesh is made from an ultralight material like gold-plated molybdenum. To set it up, guide wires are pulled to the top of the anchor wires, causing the mesh to unfold, much like origami. Origami's clever folds allow fitting a large 350-meter radar dish into a small lunar lander. Once everything is ready, the radio telescope can start sending data back to Earth. Unlike the James Webb telescope, it won't provide pretty pictures. Instead, it offers data about how hydrogen is spread in the universe. This info is crucial for understanding the universe's origins. Currently, scientists believe hydrogen is evenly distributed in space and time, but past assumptions, like with cosmic background radiation, have been proven wrong. This telescope will help test these ideas and refine our grasp of the universe. But how does it detect hydrogen? H2 atoms floating around. These atoms were really cold and didn't give off any energy. Sometimes these atoms can get a little extra energy from bumping into other tiny particles. Eventually, this extra energy needs to be released and it comes out as a photon with a very specific length, 21 centimeters. This is why it's called the 21 centimeters line. A radio telescope on the far side of the moon is being used to detect hydrogen formations across the universe by analyzing radio waves. It tracks these formations over time by measuring how much the frequencies have stretched due to the expanding universe, providing crucial data for understanding star formation and the universe's cooling after the Big Bang. To transmit this data back to Earth, improved communication through lunar missions like NASA's Artemis program is essential. The hydrogen mapping mission will last for a year, during which it aims to unravel the early universe's changes. Additionally, the telescope can study exoplanets' magnetic fields, potentially helping identify habitable places beyond Earth, making this an exciting project for scientific discovery. 